Hello, in this lecture we will find out the length of line segment X using three different methods. In the drawing we have a right triangle, triangle ABC, angle ABC equals to 90 degrees. We also know that angle DA C this angle equals to 45 degrees and we know that side AB of triangle ABC equals to 6 units side DC equals to 10 units and we want to find out the length of line segment AD that is equal to X so we start with the first method and uh, we do a construction we will we'll extend line segment AD by a straight line And then from point C, we will draw perpendicular on the extended AD. So this angle is equal to 90 degrees and this angle is also equal to 90 degrees according to our construction and we define the tangent point of the perpendicular from point C and the extended AD is point E So, we know that uh, the sum of the angles in the right triangle, triangle AEC, is equal to 180 degrees. So, in the right triangle, triangle AEC, The sum of the angles is equal to 180 degrees. So, which angles we have in the right triangle, triangle AC? We have here 45 degrees, and we have here 90 degrees, and we also have angle ACE. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. According to the rule that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, we will subtract 135 degrees from this equation and we get that the missing angle, angle ACE is equal to 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, it is equal to 45 degrees. So we actually found out that this angle is equal to 45 degrees. And ACE equals to 45 degrees. We define line segment DE as Y. So AE is equal to X plus Y. And uh, we know that 
in front of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. So, in triangle ACE, we have two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to 45 degrees. Therefore, in front of those two equal angles, we have equal sides, that is to say AE is equal to EC. AE is equal to EC. But we know that AE equals to X plus Y. So from this equation, X plus Y equals to AE equals to EC, we will conclude, we will derive that EC is also equals to X plus Y. So we can write here that EC equals to X plus Y. And uh, actually we have here those two angles, they are equal to each other because they are vertex angles. So I write it down. This angle, that is angle EDC. is equal to this angle that is actually angle BDA and they are equal to each other according to the rule that vertex angles are equal to each other Vertex angles are equal to each other. Okay, and if we define angle EDC as alpha. Then from this equation, alpha equals to EDC equals to BDA, we will derive that angle BDA is also equals to alpha. So if angle EDC is equal to alpha, then angle BDA will also be equal to alpha. Okay. And in the right triangle, 
Well, I'm going to be the A. We have one angle that is equal to alpha. Therefore, this angle, angle BAD, must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in this triangle to 180 degrees. This angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha because 90 degrees minus alpha plus alpha is 90 degrees and 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. Likewise, in the right triangle, triangle EDC, this angle must be also equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in this triangle, triangle EDC to 180 degrees. This angle must be equal to 180 degrees because 90 degrees minus alpha plus alpha is 90 degrees and 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. So we actually proved that all three angles in the right triangle, triangle ABD, you can go ahead to all three angles in the right triangle, triangle EDC. Why? Because those two angles they are both equal to alpha, therefore they are equal to each other. Those two angles they are both equal to 90 degrees minus alpha, therefore they are equal to each other. And both those two angles, they are equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. So I'm writing down. So those two angles, they are equal to each other, they are equal to alpha. And that is to say, angle BDA is equal to angle EDC Again, in the right triangles, triangle ABD and triangle EDC, we know that angle BDA is equal to angle EDC, and both angles they are equal to alpha. Those two angles are also equal to each other, so angle BAD. In this right angle is equal to angle ECD. In this right angle, the both angles are equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. Again, angle BAD is equal to angle ECD, and both angles they are equal to 90 degrees plus alpha. And those both, both those angles they are equal to each other, they are equal to 90 degrees. So angle ABD. This triangle is equal to angle DEC in this triangle, and they are both equal to 90 degrees.
So, I'm going to say again, but again, ABD is equal to again DEC, and they're both equal to 90 degrees. So, we actually proved that all triangles in the right triangle ABD can move to all triangles in the right triangle DEC. Therefore, those two triangles are similar to each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. We write it down. We actually proved that the right mid triangle, triangle BDC is similar to the right main triangle, triangle DEC according to angle, 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 similar to the wall. Same of similar to the right green triangle, triangle EDC, according to angle, angle, angle. Similarity rule. And from the fact that those two right wing triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will conclude that AB over EC is equal to BD over DE. It is equal to AD over DC. I will repeat again. From the fact that the two right main triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over EC equals to D, BD over DE equals to AD over DC. Okay, and AB is equal to 6 units according to what is given as the question. EC equals to X plus Y. And it is equal to BD over DE that is equal to Y and it is equal to AD that is equal to X according to what is given in the question over DC. DC equals to 10 units according to what is given us in the question. So, in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 6 over x plus y equals to bd over y equals to x over 10. 
we find out the value of line segment BD by using the Pythagoras theorem, by implementing the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle ABD. In the right green triangle, triangle ABD, according to the Pythagoras theorem, We will get that the square of the apotropos equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, a d square is equal to a b square plus b d square. Repeat again in the right triangle triangle ABD by PT. PT is a version for Pythagoras theorem. AD square equals to AB square plus BD square. AD is equal to X, so AD square is X square, and it is equal to AB square 36. So 6 squared is 36 plus bd squared. bd is the missing variable, so we we'll leave it as it is. In conclusion, we found out that x squared equals to 36 plus bd squared. We will subtract x squared from this equation and we get that bd squared is equal to x squared minus 36. Here we will take out all of this equation and we will get that bd is equal to the square root of x squared minus 36 so if I know that bd equals to the square root of x squared minus 36 now we can substitute bd in this equation, equation number 1 by square root of x squared minus 36, we will do it now and we get that according to equation number one, six over x plus y is equal to b d over y and b d is equal to square root of x square minus 36 over y and it is equal to x over 10 So we actually found out that according to equation number 1, 6 over x plus y equals to square root of x squared minus 36 over x and it is equal to x over 10. So this is equation number 1 and from this equation we will Divide two equations the first equation 
Win B. Let's go to sites and I can't reach on them. That is to say, when we do the first equation, we get that 6 over x plus y is equal to x over 10. This will be the first equation. Here we will cross multiply this equation, equation number 1. And we get that according to equation number 1, 6 times 10 is 60, and it is equal to x times x plus y. We will open the bracket in this side of equation number 1. And we get that according to equation number 1, 60 equals to x times x is x squared plus xy. We subtract x squared from this equation, equation number 1. that according to equation number 1, xy is equal to 60 minus x squared. I repeat again, according to equation number 1, we found out that x squared, xy equals to 60 minus x squared. In the next step, we create equation number 2, from this long equation, those two sides are equal to each other. So I'll write it down. This will, will be equation number two. According to equation number two, square root of x squared minus 36 over y is equal to x over 10. We will cross multiply this equation, equation number 2, and we we'll get that according to equation number 2, 10 times the square root of xy minus 36 equals to xy. So we have, here we have two different expressions for x, y. In equation number one and equation number two. In the next step, we create equation number three that states that x, y according to equation number one must be equal to x, y according to equation number two. So x, y according to equation number 1 is equal to 60 minus x, y, minus x squared, and it must be equal to x, y according to equation number 2, that is actually equals to 10 times square root of x squared minus 36. Ten times square root of x squared minus forty-six. Here we will square both sides of this equation, equation number three, and we will get that according to equation number three, Sixty minus x squared squared is equal to ten squared is one hundred. Here 
you know, you know the square cancels the root and we left only with x square minus 36. We will open the brackets on both sides of equation number 3 and you will get that according to equation number 3 60 minus x squared squared is 60 squared that is 2600 plus x squared squared that is x to the power of 4 minus 2 times 60 times x squared and it is equal to 100 times x squared minus 100 times 36, that is minus 3600. Here we will add 3600 to this equation, equation number 3, and we get it going into equation number 3. 3600 plus 3600 is 7200 plus x to the power of 4 minus 2 times 60 is minus 120 x squared and it is equal to 100x squared here we will subtract 100x squared from this equation, equation number 3. And we get that according to equation number 3. x to the power of 4. Here we have minus 120x squared, minus 100 squared is minus 220x squared plus 7200 is equal to 0 here we will substitute minus 220x squared by minus 180x squared minus 40x squared and we get that it's going to equation number 3 x to the power of 4 minus 180x squared minus 40x squared plus 7200 equals to 0 So we divide this equation to two parts and we will take a common factor of x squared from those two expressions What is left? from x to the power of 4 after we took from it x squared as a common factor what is left it is actually x squared <coughs> and what is left from minus 180 x squared after we took from it x squared as a common factor what is left it is actually minus 180 likewise we will take from these two expressions minus 40 as a common factor And what is left for minus 40x squared after we took from it minus 40 as a common factor? What is left is actually x squared. And what is left from 7200 after we took from it minus 40 as a common factor? What is left it is actually minus 180.
that is equal to zero. Why? Because minus 180 times minus 40 is exactly equal to 7200. So here we will take x squared minus 180 as a common factor from those two expressions. So x squared minus 180 is taken as a common factor. What is left? from x squared times x squared minus 180 after we took from it x squared minus 180 is a gamma factor what is left is actually x squared and what is left from minus 40 times x squared minus 180 after we took from it x uh, after uh, we took from it uh, x squared minus 180 is a common factor, what is left it is actually minus 40 and it is equal to 0. So here we will have two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution for x is that either x squared minus 180 equals to 0 and the second solution for x is that either x squared minus 40 is equal to 0. So according to the first solution, we will get that x squared is equal to 180 and 180 is equal to 5 times 36 here we we'll take a root out of this equation equation number 1 and we get that the value of x is equal to the square root of 5 times 36 the square root of 36 is 6 so inside the root we have we left only with five. So in conclusion we found out that according to the first solution for x, x is equal to six times square root of five, that is actually equals to thirteen point forty one, that is less than ten units. This is the first uh, solution for x. Actually, 13.41 is greater than 10 units, of course. And the second solution for x is that x squared minus 40 equals to 0, that is to say x squared x square minus 40 equals to 0, that is to say x squared is equal to 40. Here we take a root out of this equation, equation number 2, and we get that x equals to the square root of 40. 40 is 4 times 10 and the square root of 4 is 2 so in conclusion we found out that according to the second solution for x x equals to the square root of 4 is 2 and inside the root we have only left with 10 2 times Square root of 10 is about 6.32 units, that is 
less than 10 units. In conclusion, we have two solutions for x. The first solution is that x equals to 6 times square root of 5, that is actually equals to 13.41, that is greater than 10 units. And the second solution for x is that x equals to 2 times square root of 10, that is 6.22, that is less than 10 units. Okay, so in the next step, I will copy the right triangle, triangle ABD and triangle ADC, and we will analyze those two triangles and uh, we will analyze the two triangles in order to find out which one of the two solutions for X is correct because inside uh, one of the hypotenuse of the right triangle, triangle ABD is equal to X. Okay, so here we have the right triangle, triangle ABD, the right green triangle, triangle ABD. We define angle BAD, this angle as theta. This angle is equal to alpha. So this is the right triangle, triangle ABD, and we have here triangle ADC. Here, this angle, that is actually angle ADC, angle ADC, is defined as exterior angle of the right triangle, triangle ABD. Okay. I'll repeat again, this angle, angle ADC is defined as, as an exterior angle of the right green triangle, triangle ABD. And the right triangle, triangle ABD is also three interior angles. Angle theta, angle alpha, and this angle that is right angle, those three angles are defined as Interior angles of the right green triangle, triangle ABD. And we have all number one that is related to the size 
the Excel Engel Engel ADC according to rule number one the size of an internal engine of a triangle and the size of an exterior engine of course of this engine the size of an external angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles that are not adjusted to it. I read rule number one again. <coughs> According to rule number one, the size of an external angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. So according to this rule, rule number one, the size of this external angle, angle ADC, that is an external angle of triangle ABD, is equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. This angle, angle alpha, is adjacent, is adjacent to this angle, angle ADC, and the two other internal angles that are not adjacent to it are theta and 90 degrees. And according to rule number one, it is equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. That is to say, it will be equal to 90 degrees plus theta. So according to rule number one, the size of the external angle, angle ADC equals to 90 degrees plus theta. And we also know that the sum of the angles, here it is given us the question that side DC is equal to 10 units. And we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees and especially in triangle ADC we know that the sum of its angles must be equal to 180 degrees so which angles we have inside, the right, uh, inside triangle ADC we have one angle that is equal to 45 degrees we have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees plus theta and we have the missing angle that is actually equal to angle A, C, B in total the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees here we will subtract 135 degrees from this equation and we will get that angle theta plus angle ACB in total the sum of those two angles will be equal to 180 degrees minus 125 degrees it is 45 degrees we we'll subtract theta from this equation 
And we get that the missing angle, angle ACB, angle ACB is equal to 45 degrees minus theta. So the missing angle equals to 45 degrees minus theta. So we can write here that this angle is equal to 45 degrees minus theta. So after this angle, angle ACD, this is actually angle ACD. is the smallest angle in triangle A ADC because this angle equals to 45 degrees and this is smaller than 45 degrees and it is let alone that it is smaller also from 90 degrees plus theta so we can write down that in triangle ADC in triangle ADC The smallest angle is angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta. Okay, the smallest angle in triangle ADC is angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta. And we have also rule number two. According to rule number two, the smallest angle of a triangle is always Opposite to the shortest side. smallest angle of a triangle is always opposite to the shortest side. So, according to rule number two, we know that angle A, C, D, this angle is the smallest angle in triangle A, D, C. And according to rule number two, this angle is located opposite the shortest side. That is to say, AD that is equal to X is the shortest side. Okay, AD that is equal to X, it is shortest, the shortest side. 
in triangle ADC, that is to say AD that is equal to X is less than 10 units. Okay, AD that is equal to X is less than 10 units because of the fact that it must be less than side DC. Okay, we can write down that AD that is equal to X is less then side DC, that is to say AD that is equal to X is less than side DC that is equal to 10, that is to say X is less than 10 units, we add two solutions that are possible for x, the first solution for x is that x equals to six root 5, that is actually equals to 13.41 units, that is greater than 10 units, but according to what we found out just right now, we know that x is less than 10 units. So this solution that x is equal to 13.41, that is greater than 10 units, is the incorrect solution, we will cancel this solution and we left to only with the second solution that x equals to 2 times root of 10 units that is equal to 6.32 units, that is less than 10 units that is the solution, that is the correct solution that x equals to 2 times root of 10 units, that is equal to 6.32 units. I repeat that again, that the solution to the question is that x equals to 2 times root of 10 units, that is 6.32 units. Okay, so we finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the value of line segment X according to the second method. In the second method, we will do another construction. From point D, we, draw, we will draw a straight line on AC in such a way that the angle that will be created here angle AED will be equal to 45 degrees so we know that the sum of the angles in triangle ADE must be equal to 118 degrees so we can we have in triangle ADE we have 45 degrees plus 45 degrees 
plus the missing angle, that is angle ADE. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Here, 45 degrees plus 45 degrees is 90 degrees. So we subtract 90 degrees from this equation. And we get that the missing angle, angle ADE, is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, it is 90 degrees. So here, this angle is a right angle, it is equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, triangle ADE is a right triangle. And we will define angle BAD as theta. In triangle ABD, we have, it is a right triangle, one angle is equal to 90 degrees, the other angle is equal to theta, so the missing angle, angle ABDA, must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles to 180 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta, and here uh, we have triangle ABC, we know that it is a right triangle, so BC is one side of the right triangle, triangle ABC, therefore it is absolutely a straight line. So we can write down that BC is a straight line, BC is a straight line, Line right segment VC is a straight line because it is one side of a triangle, it must be a straight line. And we have the rule that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So here, if we focus on the upper side of the straight line BC, at point D, Then we know that the sum of the angles on the upper side of the straight line BC, on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D? We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees minus theta, plus this angle that is equal to 90 degrees plus the missing angle that is actually equals to angle ADC in total the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned that the sum of the angles on one side of the straight line is equal to 180 degrees I repeat again the sum of three angles on the upper side of this set Point D must be equal to 180 degrees. That is to say, 90 degrees minus theta plus 90 degrees plus angle ADC in total, they must be equal to 180 degrees. We have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, it is 180 degrees. So we have 180 degrees on both sides of the equation, so 180 degrees will get cancelled. And we left only with minus theta plus Angle EDC, angle EDC that is equal to zero. We will add theta to this equation, and we get that the missing angle, angle EDC, is 
is equal to theta. So this angle, this angle is equal to theta. In the next step, we will do another construction. From point E, we will go perpendicular on BC. So, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to our construction. And we will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point E and BC as F. So actually, triangle EDF is a right triangle. In this right triangle, this angle equals to theta. So in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle, triangle EDF to 180 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Actually, we know that in front of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. In triangle ADE, we have two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to 45 degrees. Therefore, in front of those two equal angles, there are equal sides. That is to say, AD equals to DE. In triangle ADE, side AD must be equal to side DE because those two sides are located in front of equal angles. But according to, all, to what is given us in the question, AD is equal to X. So from this equation, X equals to AD equals to DE, we derive that DE is also equal to X. DE is also equal to X, so we can write here that DE equals to X. In the next step, we will prove that uh, the two right triangles, triangle ABD and triangle EDF, can run to each other. We will prove that this right triangle, triangle ABD, the green right triangle, triangle ABD, is congruent to the main right triangle, triangle EDF. And they congruent to each other according to angle side, angle rule. So I'll write it down. We'll pull the right main triangle, triangle ABD. It's going to the right green triangle, triangle EDF. So, why those two green right triangles can run to each other? First of all, those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. So, angle BAD is again. is equal to angle EDF, this angle and the both equal to theta. Here I will repeat again angle B A D equals to angle EDF and the both equal to theta. We also Know that AD equals to DE equals to X. AD, side AD equals to side DE, and both sides are equal to X. I'll repeat again. 
sin AD equals to sin D in both sides are equal to X. And those two angles are equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So this angle, that is angle ADB, is equal to this angle, that is actually angle DEF. And both angles, they are equal to 90 degrees. Minus theta. I repeat again. Angle ADB equals to angle DEF. Both angles are equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So we actually prove that those two green right angles can be went to each other according to angle side angle rule. Those two angles in the side that attach to those two angles in this green triangle can went to those two angles and the side that attach to these two angles in this right triangle. Therefore, we proved that the green triangle, triangle ABD, is congruent. This is the sign of congruent to the right green triangle, triangle EDF, according to an uh, angle side angle wall. Okay. And from the fact that those two right green triangles can move into each other, we will conclude that AB is equal to DF. AB equals to DF. Hence, AB is equal to DF. But AB is equal to 6, it is given us the question. And from this equation, 6 equals to AB equals to DF, we, we derive that DF is also equals to 6. DF is equals to 6 units. And what is the value of line segment FC? It's very easy to see from the drawing that FC is equal to DC minus DF. Again, DC minus DF equals to FC. Again, FC equals to DC minus DF. So FC is equal to DC that is 10 units, minus DF that is 6 units. That is to say FC equals to 10 minus 6 that is 4. So if we know that FC equals to 4 units, Likewise, because of the fact that those two red right triangles can go into each other, we will conclude that BD is equal to EF. BD is equal to EF. BD is equal to EF and also here AB is equal to DF. According to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. 
da što je Tangarska vojna tuča, da je ovdje kao škodni sajt, da ti su se biti ni F i B kvar to i čada. So, if we define BD if we define BD as Y so if, if BD is equal to Y according to our definition then from this equation Y equals to BD equals to F we derive the EF is also equals to Y. EF is equal to Y. So here EF equals to Y. In the next step, we will prove that the right big triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right small triangle, triangle EFC. Okay, so we prove that the right big triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right small triangle, triangle EFC. So why does Two right triangles are similar to each other. First of all, we have those two angles. They are equal to each other. They are both equal to 90 degrees. So angle ABC in triangle ABC is equal to angle EFC in triangle FEC. And they are both equal to 19 degrees. Again, angle ABC equals to angle EFC, and they are both equal to 19 degrees. And we also have here this angle that is a common angle, it belongs to both triangles. So, angle BCA in triangle ABC is equal to angle F FCE in triangle EFC and they are equal to each other. It is actually the same angle, it is a common angle. I'll repeat again. Angle BCA equals to angle FCE. It's a common angle. This belongs to both triangles. And those two angles are also, also equal to each other according to third angle theorem. So angle BAC, this angle. is equal to this angle, this is, this is actually angle FEC and those angles are equal to each other according to third angle theorem Here, angle BCA equals to angle FEC according to further angle theorem. So, what is further angle theorem? According to further angle theorem, if two angles in one triangle can go to two angles in another triangle, then the first pair of angles must also can go out. Why? Because They are complementary to 180 degrees. Okay? So, from the fact that triangle ABC is similar, 
So if you write down the triangle ABC, the big right triangle is similar to triangle EFC according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. I repeat again, we actually proved because of the fact that all the angles in triangle ABC can go into all the angles in triangle EFC, we proved that triangle ABC is similar, this is the, the sign of similar to triangle EFC according to angle and angle similarity rule. Okay, and from the fact that those two Triangles are similar to each other, we conclude that AB over BC is equal to EF over FC. Similar to triangle EFC, we conclude that AB over BC equals to FE over F AB over BC equals to EF over FC. AB is equal to six units, and BC equals to Y plus ten. And it is equal to EF, EF equals to Y, over FC, FC equals to 4. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 6 over Y plus 10 equals to Y over 4. Here we cross multiply this equation, equation number 1. And we get that according to equation number one, six times four is twenty-four. Twenty-four is equal to y times y plus ten. Twenty-four equals to y times y plus ten. Here we will open the brackets on this side of equation number one. And we'll get the 24 equals to y times y is y squared. Y, plus y times 10 is 10y. Here we subtract 24 from this equation, equation number 1. And we get that according to equation number 1, y squared plus 10y. Minus 24 is equal to 0. So here we have a quadratic equation. And the uh, general form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. Here a, b, and c are the coefficients of a quadratic equation. And x is the variable that we are looking for, and we find out the value of x according to the following formula that x is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 times ac over 2a. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a is equal to 1, the coefficient b is equal to 10 and the coefficient c is equal to minus 24 and the variable that we are looking for is y so x equals to y 
we will put the data inside the equation from x and we will find out the value of the values of y because x equals to y. So here y equals to minus b, b is 10, so minus b is minus 10, plus minus square root of b square, b is 10, so b square is 10 squared, that is 100, minus 4 times a is 1, times c is c is minus 24 over 2a a is 1 so 2 times 1 is 2 so we got that y equals to minus 10 plus minus minus 4 times minus 24 is plus 96 and 96 plus 100 is 196 so inside the root we have 196 over 2. The square root of 196 is 14, so I want it now. y equals to minus 10 plus minus 14 over 2. So here we have two solutions that are possible for y. The first solution for y is that y this will be y1 that is equal to minus 10 minus 14 over 2 minus 10 minus 14 is minus 24 over 2 is minus 12 so if one know that y1 is equal to minus 12 But because of the fact that y is the length of side BD, here y it is a length, therefore it must be a positive number. So y cannot be equal to minus 12. That is a negative number, so we cancel the solution, and we left only with the second solution, y2, that is equals to minus 10 plus 14 over 2. So y2 equals to minus 10 plus 14 is 4, 4 over 2 is 2. So we found out that y equals to 2. Y2 equals to 2. So we can write here that y equals to 2. Now I copy the right triangle triangle ABD and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on this triangle triangle ABD. The right triangle, triangle ABD, according to the Pythagoras theorem, PT, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say, A, D square equals to AB square plus BD square. AD is x, so AD square is x square. x square equals to AB square. AB is 6, so AB square is 6 square, that is 36. Plus BD square. BD is 2, so BD square is 2 square, that is 4. So if I know that x square equals to 36 plus 4 is 40, we take root of this equation and we get that x equals to the square root of 40. 40 is 4 times 10. And the score to 4 is 2. So in conclusion, we found out that x equals to either 2 times score of 10 units, or in terms of number, 
numbers it is equal to 6.32 units okay we finish with the second method in the next step I will present to you how to find out the length of line segment AD that is equal to X according to the third method In the third method, we will define angle BAD as theta. And we will define side BD of triangle ABD as Y. So in the right triangle, triangle ABD. Tangent theta equals to BD over AB. BD is Y and AB is 6. So, in conclusion, we found out that tangent theta in the right angle, tangent ABD equals to Y over 6. Likewise, we'll focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. In the right triangle, triangle ABC, we know that tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to BC over AB BC equals to Y plus 10 and AB equals to 6 so in conclusion we found out that in the I triangle triangle ABC tangents theta plus 45 degrees equals to Y plus 10 over 6. This will be equation number 1. Actually, we have a trigonometric identity for triangle theta plus 45 degrees. The trigonometric identity for triangle Theta plus 45 degrees. It is actually equal to 1 plus sine of theta over 1 minus sine of theta. We we'll use this monomotic identity and we we'll substitute tangent theta plus 45 degrees in equation number 1 by this expression and we get that according to equation number 1 tangent theta plus 45 degrees it is equal to according to this monometric identity it is equal to 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta and According to equation number 1, it is equal to y plus 10 over 6. We have already found out that tangent theta equals to y over 6. So we substitute Tangent theta in this equation, equation number one, by y over six, and we get that according to equation number one, one plus tangent theta is y over six over 
1 minus omega theta is y over 6 is equal to y plus 10 over 6. Here we multiply 1 by 6 and then we, we divide it by 6 in order to overcome a factor with y over 6 and with minus y over 6. And we get that according to equation number 1, 6 plus y over 6 over 6 minus y over 6 equals to y plus 10 over 6. Here we have 6 in the numerator and 6 in the denominator, so 6 will get cancelled. What is left of equation number 1 after we cancelled 6? What is left it is actually here we have in the numerator 6 plus y over 6 minus y. It is equal to y plus 10 over 6. Here we will cross multiply this equation, equation number 1. And we'll get that according to equation number one. Six times six plus y equals to six minus y times y plus ten. Here we'll open the brackets on both sides of equation number one and we'll get that according to equation number one. Six times six is thirty-six plus six y. It is equal to 6y plus 6 times 10 is 60 minus y squared minus 10y. Here we have 6y on both sides of the equation, so 6y will get cancelled. And what is left of equation number 1 after we cancel 6y? What is left is actually in this side. Of the equation we have 36, it is equal to 60 minus y square minus 10y. Here we will add y square and 10y to this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, y square plus 10y, and we subtract 60 from this equation, 36 minus 60 is minus 24 is equal to zero. So here we have quadratic equation, exactly the same quadratic equation that we have in the second method. The solution to this quadratic equation, it has two solutions. The first solution is y1 equals to minus 2f, but, but because of the fact that y is a length, y is a length, it must be a positive number. So this solution is incorrect solution, and we left only with the solution that y2 is equal to 2. So here I will copy the right triangle, triangle ABD in this new page and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle ABD. Here we get, according to the Pythagoras theorem, that AB square equals to AB square plus BD square equals to AD square. AB is 6, so AB square is 36, plus BD is 2, so BD square is 4 equals to AD square. So 36 plus 4 is 40. It is equal to AD square, that is X square. So X square equals to 40. Therefore X will be equal to either 2 times square root of 10 units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. Okay. In the next step, we'll summarize the lecture. So we wanted to find out the value of line segment x. According to the first method, we 
we made a construction, we extended line segment AD by straight line, and from point C we drew perpendicular to the extended AD, we defined the touching point between the perpendicular from point C to the extended AD as point E. So this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle equals 90 degrees according to our construction. And uh, in the right triangle, triangle AEC, we know that the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in the right, uh, right triangle, triangle AEC, we have here 45 degrees. And we have here 90 degrees, and we have also angle ACE. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtracted 125 degrees from this equation, and we learned that the missing angle, angle ACE, equals to 180 degrees minus 125 degrees, it is 45 degrees. So this angle equals to 45 degrees. And uh, Inside triangle AEC, we have two equal angles. Both those two angles are equal to 45 degrees, and we know that in front of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. That is to say, in front of those two equal angles, there must be equal sides. That is to say, AE must be equal to EC. AE must be equal to EC. We define DE as Y, so AE equals to X plus Y. AE equals to X plus Y, and from this equation, X plus Y equals to a equals to EC, we will derive that EC is also equal to X plus Y. So here we have those two angles are defined as vertex angles, and we know that vertex angles are equal to each other, so if one angle is equal to alpha, then the other angle will be also equal to alpha. And th if this angle is equal to alpha, then in the right triangle, triangle ABD, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles to 180 degrees. Likewise, if this angle equals to alpha, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in the right triangle, triangle DEC. So here we prove that those two white green triangles are similar to each other. Why they similar to each other? First of all, those two angles are equal to each other, they are both equal to alpha. Those two angles are also equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. And those two angles they are, also, they are also equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees. So all the angles of triangle MBD can go to all the angles of triangle DEC. Therefore, we prove that those two green line triangles are similar to each other according to angle, 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 angle rule. Triangle ABD is similar to triangle ADC according to angle, angle, angle rule. And from the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over AC equals to BD over DE equals to AD over DC. A, B is 6, E, C is X plus Y, B, D is B, D, over D, E is Y, A, D is X, and D, C is 10. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the green right triangle triangle A, B, D. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the apodos equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say A, D square equals to A, B square plus B, D square. AD squared equals to AB squared plus BD squared. AD equals to X, so AD squared is X squared. AB equals to 6, so AB squared is 6 squared, that is 46, plus BD squared is the missing variable. We subtracted 36 from this equation and we found out that BD squared equals to X squared minus 46. We took a root of this equation and we found out that BD equals to the square root of X squared minus 46. So we can substitute. BD in this equation by square root of x squared minus 46. We did it and we got that according to equation number one, 
6 over x plus y equals to big D and big D equals to square root of x square root of 36 over y that is equal to x over 10. We created the first equation from this long equation. Those two sides are equal to each other. That is to say 6, 6 over x plus y equals to x over 10. We cross multiply this equation in equation number 1 and we got that 6 times 10 is equal to 60 and it is equal to x times x plus y. We open the brackets on this side of equation number 1 and we got that 60 equals to x squared times plus xy. Then we subtracted x squared from this equation and we got that xy equals to 60 minus x squared. This is equation number 1. Then we created equation number 2 from this long equation. Those two sides, they are equal to each other. That is to say, square root of x squared minus 36 over y equals to x over 10. We cross multiply this equation and equation number 2, and we got that 10 times square root of x squared minus 36 equals to xy. So we have two different expressions for xy. Then we create an equation number 3 that states that xy going into equation number 1 must be equal to xy going into equation number 2. So xy going into equation number 1 is 60 minus x squared, and it must be equal to xy going into equation number 2, that is actually 10 times square root of x squared minus 36. Then we squared both sides of equation number 3, and we got that 60 minus x squared squared equals to 10 squared, that is 100, and the square of a root, when we have the square cancels the root, and we left only with x squared minus 36. We open the brackets on both sides of equation number 3 and we got that 60 minus x squared equals to 60 squared that is 3600 plus x squared squared that is x to the power of 4 minus 2 times 60 times x squared and it is equal to other times x squared minus other times times 36 is minus 3600. Here we added 3600 to this equation, equation number 3, and we got that 3600 plus 3600 is 7200 plus x to the power of 4, and it is equal to minus 2 times minus 60 is minus 220x squared, and it is equal to 100x squared. We subtracted 100x squared for this equation, equation number 3. And we got that x squared and minus 120 minus 100 is minus 220. So here we will have minus 220x squared plus 7200 that is equal to 0. Here we substituted minus 200x squared by minus 180x squared minus 40x squared. And we got here two expressions. From those two expressions we took x squared as a current factor, so inside the markets we will have x squared minus 120 and from those two expressions we took minus 40 as a current factor, so inside the markets we will have x squared minus 180 equals to 0. Then we took x squared minus 180 as a current factor and inside the markets what we have here is x squared minus 140. So here we have two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution is x squared minus 180 equals to 0, and the second solution is x squared minus 40 equals to 0. So according to the first solution, x squared will be equal to 180. 180 is 5 times 36. We took a root of this equation, and we got that x equals to the square root of 36 times 5. The square root of 36 is 6. So in conclusion, we found out that according to the first solution, x equals to 6 times square root of 5, that is actually 13.41 units, that is greater than 10. Then according to the second solution, x squared equals to 40. We took a root out of this equation and found out that x is equal to either 2 times square root of 10 units, so in terms of numbers it is 6.42, that is less than 10 units. Then I draw triangle ABD and triangle a, D, C in this new page. Here, angle A, D, C is an external angle of angle A, B, D. And the uh, triangle A, B, D, the right triangle, has 
Après, il y a une telle langue de tes theta avec une langue d'un alpha. Et donc, on est au rôle de l'auto. So, angle ADC est un accélérateur, angle of triangle ABD. Et quand on est au rôle de l'auto, le size of an extérieur angle in the triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles that are not adjacent to it. So, the size of this in external angle, angle ADC, will be equal to the sum of the two internal angles of triangle ABD that are not adjacent to it. Angle alpha is adjacent to it, this angle, and the two other angles that are not adjacent to it is set up at plus 90 degrees. So, the size of angle ADC will be equal to 90 degrees plus theta. And we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees, and especially in triangle ADC, the sum of its angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Which angles we have in triangle ADC? We have here 45 degrees, and we have angle 90 degrees plus theta, and we have the missing angle, angle ACB. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtracted 135 degrees from this equation, and we found out that the missing angle, and then we subtracted also theta, and found out that the missing angle, this angle equals to 45 degrees minus theta. This angle that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. Okay? I repeat again, in triangle ADC, the smallest angle is angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta. Then we have rule number two, according to rule number two, the smallest angle of a triangle is always opposite the shortest side. So here, according to rule number two, this smallest angle in triangle ADC is opposite the shortest side. That is to say, AD that is equal to X, it is the shortest side in triangle ADC. What does it mean? It means that AD that is equal to X is less than, than, less than the size of, uh, of side DC, that is 10 units. Okay, here. AD that is equal to X is the shortest angle, that is to say it is shorter than DC. But DC equals to 10, so AD that is equal to X is less than 10. That is to say X is less than 10 units. So the first solution that x equals to 6 times root of 5, that is 13.41, that is greater than 10 units, is incorrect solution because we, x must be less than 10 units, and we left only with the solution that s, x equals to 2 times root of 10 units, that is 6.32 units, that is less than 10 units. So the answer to the question is that x equals to 6.32 units, or it is you can represent it also as 2 times square of 10 units. That is the answer to the question. Then I present it to you how to find out the value of line segment AD that is equal to X according to the second method. In the second method, we did another construction from point D. We do a straight line on AC in such a way that angle A is equal to 45 degrees. So, and we know that the sum of the angles in triangle AD must be equal to 180 degrees. So, which angles we have in triangle AED? We have 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus the missing angle that is angle ADE. In total, they must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtract 90 degrees from this equation and found out that the missing angle, angle ADE, is the right angle, it is equal to 90 degrees. And we know that in triangle ADE we have two equal angles, and in front of equal angles in the triangle there are equal sides. That is to say, AD must be equal to DE. But AD equals to X according to what is given as an equation. So from this equation, X equals to AD equals to DE, we will derive that DE is also equal to X. Okay, and then here, we define angle BAD as theta, therefore angle ADB must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. And we know that BC is one side of triangle ABC, therefore it must be a straight line.
Okay, this is the set line. So if you, uh, and we have the rule that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if you focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D, then the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have on the upper side of BC at point D? We have one angle that is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees, and we have the missing angle that is angle EDC. In total, the sum of those two angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees, so we have 180 degrees on both sides of the equation, so 180 degrees will get cancelled, and we left only with one theta plus angle EDC that is equal to zero. We added theta to this equation, and we found out that angle EDC equals to theta. So here the missing angle, angle EDC equals to theta. So if this, uh, from point E, we go perpendicular on BC, so this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle is equal to 90 degrees according to our construction. So in this right grain triangle, triangle EFC, we have this angle is theta, so this angle must be equal to 90 degrees from theta. Then uh, we prove that those two green right triangles can go into each other. Okay, why those two these triangles can go into each other? First of all, those two angles are both equal to theta. Uh, those two sides, AD equals to D equals to X, and those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Therefore, we prove that the right green triangle, triangle ABD, is converted to the right green triangle, triangle EDF according to angle side angle rule. And from the fact that those two triangles can go to each other, we conclude that AB equals to DF. AB equals to DF, but AB equals to 6 according to what is given as the equation. So from this equation 6 equals to AB equals to DF, we, we derive that DF is also equal to 6. And therefore, if DF equals to 6, then FC equals to DC minus DF, that is to say, FC equals to 10 minus 6, that is 4, so FC equals to 4. Likewise, BD must be equal to EF because those two green triangles can go into each other. BD equals to EF. And if we define BD as Y, then from this equation Y equals to BD equals to EF, we derive that EF is also equals to Y. Okay? Then we prove that the triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFC. Why? Because both those two triangles have a right angle. This angle is a common angle, and those two angles they are equal to each other according to third angle theorem. Therefore, those two triangles are similar to each other according to angle 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those that the angle ABC is similar to triangle EFC, we derive that AB over BC equals to EF over FC. And AB equals to 6, BC equals to Y plus 10, EF equals to Y, and FC equals to 4. So we solved this equation, and we found out that here we have two solutions that are possible for Y. The first solution is a negative, but Y must be a positive number because it is an F. And we left only with the solution that y equals to 2. So in this right triangle, we implemented the Pythagoras theorem and found out that x equals to 2 times root of 10 or terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. Then I presented to you how to find out the value of line segment x according to the third method. In the third method, We defined angle BAD as theta and BD as y. So in the right triangle, triangle ABD, we know that triangle theta equals to BD over AB. BD is y, AB is 6. So in conclusion, triangle theta in the right triangle ABD equals to y over 6. Likewise, in the right triangle ABC, triangle theta plus 45 degrees equals to BC over AB. 
B C is y plus 10 and A B is 6. So in conclusion, we found out that in the right triangle A B C tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to y plus 10 over 6. This is the question number one, and we have the trigonometric identity that states that tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta. So we can substitute tangent theta plus 45 degrees in the question number one by this expression. We did it, and we got that 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta, according to equation number one, it equals to y plus 10 over 6. We solved this equation, uh, and we got two solutions. The first solution, y equals to minus 12, is an incorrect solution, because y is an elf. It must, be, it must be a positive number. So we left only with the second solution, that y equals to 2. So here, y equals to 2, a, b equals to 6, and according to the Pythagoras theorem, a, b squared plus b, d squared equals to a, d squared. That is to say 36 plus 4 equals to a, d squared. a, d is x, so 40 equals to x squared. So x equals to either 2 times square root of 10 units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. Okay, thank you very much.